Hello everyone, and welcome to the Flash Event Overview, where I will be talking about the Aston Martin Valhalla in itself, the difficulty of the event, and something I'm rather pissed about that I don't think I've seen before, which really has to be changed or fixed. But the takeaway point from this video of today is that this car on its own is worth it, as it can run sub 7.7 .7 seconds on stage 5 fully fused. That is insane. But then again, there is this other issue which really has to be changed, so I'm quite torn, and in the end, you will see why. But overall, the event is basically like any other flash event we've seen in the past. A 30 races rundown with a combination of solo races, speed traps and sprint races. The total rewards come down to 900,000 cash, 775 gold coins, 280 bronze keys, 100 silver keys and 10 gold keys, with 14 uncommon, 8 rare and 4 epic Aston Martin fusion parts to win, and 2 stage 6 parts which can be obtained running solely on stage 5 fully fused. The one on race 25 where you will have to be faster than an 8.327, followed by the other stage 6 on race 28 where it will be closer as you will have to beat a rather hard 7.778 but that is still a doable time on stage 5. These times can of course slightly vary depending on the opponent so if at any point it's a bit too hard and you're stuck try again by finding other opponents, just back out and go in again. The rewards on its own are like the normal ones for any flash event, and like always, a bit higher would be better. But of course to participate in the event, you will have to get the Aston Martin Valhalla, also known as the Son of the Valkyrie. For those who don't know, the Valkyrie AMR Pro is a concept car created by the Formula 1 mastermind Adrian Newey, making this a collaboration of Aston Martin with Red Bull Racing. From that concept they made a more realistic concept which would come to production, named as the Valkyrie, which then got the codename AMRB001. But then the more street legal version, we see here, came to life and got its own codename, the 003, but now has received its own name, the Valhalla. When these cars were released at the Geneva Motor Show of last year, there was also a third concept shown, the Vanquish Vision concept. A more consumer based car which might come to the game as well at some point, as a non-flash event car, or who knows the Valkyrie itself and the AMR Pro as season price cars. This lineup is basically Aston Martin's entry to the new decennium, supporting rear meant engine supercars, where the Valhalla is equipped with a twin turbocharged V6 putting out almost 1000 horsepower in combination with its curse system. For more information on this car and its best bits, I would like to refer to you to the season max video which I made last night. It got some nice details in there with some great AR shots, it's really worth the watch. So if you want to buy it, like usual you can select from various bundles, as Aston Martin fusion parts are not new and not so rare, and money can be won by racing online, I prefer to stick to the first cheapest bundle. The uncommon parts in the second and third bundle are really not worth it, as stripping two stock vanquishes, which can be bought by using in-game cash or gold, can get you already together 12 parts and you might pick up an epic along the way instead of being stuck with uncommon fusion parts. For the car on its own then, for me it will be the first bundle, which is the standard tier 5 price of 22 euros. As for how good this car is, well it's right up there in the top 10, as it is now the 8th fastest car in game, with my best attempt sitting at a 7.009, and this time will without a doubt be improved. But imagine if the record would sit at a 7.007, .007, that would be a nice reference to the new James Bond movie, which will have this car in it. Max Dune and Patton. But of course, maxing it out will be quite costly. The question is then how far can I get without paying for any extra crates? And for that I tried to do the event while running stage 5, and I got a lot further than I expected I would. I ended up being stuck on race 29 out of 30, and that is thanks to the fact that this car on stage 5 is an absolute monster. I think the only car to dip under 8 seconds on stage 5, and even then it goes a 7.6. For even a starting player's perspective, this is a good car worth investing in. Running this stage 5 tune, I was able to beat both stage 6 races, 
rather comfortably. But then got to race 29, where my 7.697 was just not good enough. Here's that run, hopefully it can help you out. So what does it take to beat the final race? If 7 stage 6 parts make less than 7 tenths of a second difference between the 7.6 on stage 5 and the 7.0 maxed out, some stage 6 parts will not bring much to the scene. My nitrogen intake was sadly not enough, so I would need a third one which I could get from the crates. But if you're a lucky person and you won the stage 6 body, you can beat the final race using only this one. Yes, only one can be enough. For this final race, I decided to try everything running only the body stage 6 part and I was able to beat it. The final times will vary between a low 7.3 to a 7.430 run by a Cobra jet. So this is the car you should look for for the slowest time. Here's the tune and that final race. So in terms of difficulty, this is a flash event at the same level of the Venom F5 and the Esco. A fast car with common fusion parts with a difficulty which is not too crazy. And I'm happy about that. With 2 to 3 stage 6 parts fully fused, you should be able to not only beat the final race, but run a solid 7.4. If you only have nitrous and body for example, you can even dip to the 7.3. So overall this flash event is more worth it than the Ultima RS event or the Mille Cavalli or the BT-62, as those fusion parts were super rare when the car came out. But there is one thing which is a sour apple to me and kinda ruins it. Usually when buying a car, an event is 7 days, and I expect a free crate every 24 hours, meaning you can get to loyalty stage 6 part for free. But this time around, the event is a day shorter, meaning you will be forced to pay up for your 7th crate to get to that stage 6 loyalty. And I think this is stupid. I really hope this was not deliberate, but a mistake and the event gets extended. As for me, when I'm paying 20 bucks, I expect not only my car, but also one free loyalty stage 6 spot. And that means that to me, it does change slightly the worthiness of the event. If it was 7 days, that means you should have been able to beat the event without additional costs, which I think is fair if you're paying for premium content. Recap, it's a very fast car on stage 5 without having to buy extra crates. For newer players, this is their entry to the sub 8 seconds. This is also one of the best cars out there to buy, as it's one of the easiest fusion parts to get if we're talking about top 10 fastest cars, compared to the likes of the Hennessy F5 and the Königsee, which have slightly harder to get fusion parts. If you're looking about a one-time 20 bucks spend, I would have to pick between this, the Jesko or the Venom F5. Where to be fair, this one will be easier to get in the 7 seconds range, but the other ones are slightly faster on the long run. So to me, it is worth the buy, unless you already have the faster cars and you don't really like it. Then it has no additional value but the sentiment, unless you're a collector like me where you just want to have every car. But the crate missing to hit loyalty for me is a kick on the shin, which I really hope gets fixed and I really genuinely believe this is a mistake. A premium paid event with 7 loyalty should be at least 7 days that is quite a stinker. And with that bombshell we will close it off for today. If you enjoyed the video do not hesitate to leave a like, subscribe for more content like this. My name is Miller, see you around and keep racing.